I hate them. Does he? And where the cuss are they coming from? And you've either had them, you have them now, or you're gonna have them. I'm talking about micro bubbles, and I'm gonna show you where they're coming from and how to stop them. It's easy. Here we go. Not too long ago, while I was making my last video, I noticed that all these irritating little micro bubbles had made an appearance in Alcatraz again, making my crystal clear water look dirty. And I do mean a lot of micro bubbles. Sucks big time, bro. These things can appear because of many different problems your tank might be experiencing. And I'm gonna get to the different reasons you might have these little devils in your own tank, but first, I just want you to pause this video here in a moment and leave a comment about what you think is causing these hideous bubbles in my tank. We'll see who knows. It may not be what you think it is either. Usually the problem is with the filter, I'll let you know that. I checked all three of the filter outputs and I found the culprit. The interesting thing was that it wasn't pumping out bubbles all the time, it was sporadic. Here's the filter, what it's sitting on, and here are the hoses. I'm not saying that these are the issue, but you at least need to see these things before you guess. And don't cheat and read other people's comments first. I will know. Just kidding, there's no way I could know. So leave a quick comment on what you think caused my micro bubbles, and then I'll tell you later on in the video if you were right. And bonus points if you can tell me in which Wes Anderson movie the characters actually use the word cuss like I did in the intro instead of swearing. All right, pause now. So let's start with your canister filter. You want to make sure that your hoses are nice and snug with your intake and output and also where they meet up with the canister, which if you have an FX6, that's your aqua stop valves. What I did was I just went to the intake and output and I disconnected the hoses and then I made sure that when I reconnected them that they were nice and snug. That way there was no question as to whether or not I was missing something. And with the aqua stop valves, it's super easy. There's a little clamp on there with a screw and you just have to tighten that screw up and make sure it's nice and tight on there. When you've made sure that all these connections are tight, you're going to be less likely to have any air getting sucked in, which is going to be coming out as micro bubbles. You'll get no chapuka here. Subscribe. Ding ding. This is an intake from an FX6 and this part right here is the connector where the ribbed hosing attaches. And you want to make sure that this is below the water line. If it's not, air is going to get sucked in there because it's not airtight and it's going to come out as micro bubbles. Easy solution, of course, is to just drop this down below the water line. The next thing you want to check is just look at your hosing and make sure there aren't any tiny cracks or holes that are allowing air to sneak in. This is a tricky one too because you might have a crack or hole so small that water can't escape out of it and you might not be able to see it, but air can still get in. So it's hard to detect and for that reason I would say that if this is your problem I would wait till you've exhausted all the other possibilities and then come back to this one and if you can't see those holes then just replace the hosing and see if that solves your problem. And it's always a good idea to have extra parts on hand so I, extra hose, extra gaskets, things like that in case there's a need for replacement or there's an emergency you just have them on hand and you can swap them out. You don't have to wait for them to arrive in the mail or go shopping for them. Remember that at the end of the video today, I'll be talking about the reason for the micro bubbles in Alcatraz and what I did to get rid of them. But for now, the last thing you want to check on your canister filter is your lid. Da. You want to make sure that that's nice and tight. And then also, I would recommend just taking it off of the filter and look at the back side to make sure that the gasket, there's a big ring that goes around the inside of the lid. Make sure that's in place, intact, and in good condition. And it might be a good time to lube the O-ring as well if you haven't done that for a while. So once you've checked all that, put the lid back on and then tighten those clamps. And when you tighten them, make sure you're using a cross pattern. Tighten one and then the one directly across from it all the way around until they're all tight. And then just give them another tighten as you go around again. But don't tighten them so much that those metal screws are gonna crack your plastic lid, which is easy to do. Hey, and while you're at it, check the canister itself to make sure there aren't any cracks in that. That'll give you micro bubbles and a lot worse. There's another reason that you can get micro bubbles in your tank that has nothing to do with your canister filter. And that's if you have an air stone or a sponge filter and it's in the wrong spot. If you have either of these, you'd be insane to place them too close to your filter intake. You know why? Well, I assume you do since this whole video is about micro bubbles. If your mean old filter intake is within reach, it'll grab as many of those bubbles as it can and then send them forward as those hideous micro bubbles spewing out of your output. There's actually a 1200 page book on the subject. It's called Move Your Air Stone and Sponge Filters. I was actually guilty of this one a few years ago, by the way. Here's one for you. Have you ever been filling up your tank after a water change and you get these little micro bubbles all over the panels in your tank? 
Well, there's a simple reason for that. If the water you're adding is colder than the water in your tank, then you're gonna get those bubbles because cold water holds more oxygen than warm water. It has nowhere to go, so it just attaches to the panels. Simple solution to this, you just wipe them off. But you have to be careful because if this is you and you're putting water in this at a different temperature than your tank water, if it's too much of a variance, it can cause your fish to stress and maybe even die. So what I do is I just grab a probe and get a temperature reading on the water I'm putting into the tank before I start putting it in. And then I'll occasionally check because I have big tanks and I can run out of hot water from my water heater. And that way I'm just making sure that the water temperature is pretty close to what these fish are used to. When I added those 12 new nut jobs from Ron Cichlids to Alcatraz, I was afraid I might end up crashing my cycle and ending up with an ammonia spike. So that's the reason why I was checking the water with my API Master Test Kit at least twice a day. And initially I got a false reading that I'll talk about in just a minute. Another reason I was concerned about an ammonia spike was because I saw those microbubbles and I thought that having microbubbles might be an indication of an ammonia spike but I wasn't sure. Why don't we ask the Squatch and see what he thinks. Of course, I'm talking about Ryan from Squatch's Cichlids. He's a fish breeder. He's been doing this a while. He has some good information that he can share with us. I spoke to him the other day, and this is what he said about microbubbles and ammonia. Ammonia is not going to cause microbubbles in the water. However, in really, really, really high quantities, I'm talking well above the hospitable range for your fish, where your fish are already dead, it will cause a foam at the top of the surface. Um, if, and I'm talking very, very high levels, higher levels than most people are gonna see in any aquarium set up at any point in time. And there you have it. There really is no connection between microbubbles and ammonia. So let me tell you about that false reading I got with the API Master Test Kit. When you're checking your water parameters, the light and where you're holding that vial matters. Just real quick here, the API Master Test Kit is a great way to test your water parameters. But one thing I noticed was that the farther I was holding the vial from the chart, the more of the color from the chart was tainting the sample. In this case, it looks more green than when I pressed it up firmly against the chart, fooling the old cichlid charmer into a frenzied panic. So just keep that in mind when doing your own testing. It's not necessarily a bad thing to have bubbles at the top of your tank, especially if you have an air stone or sponge filter, obviously. But those bubbles should be popping on their own. I mean, if, if you're getting bubbles up there and they're just staying there and hanging out maybe in the corner and you have like a bubble nest, that could be a problem. And it might be related to dirt in the tank. Or if you're feeding cheap fish food, it could be oils from that. The worst case scenario is you have some soap or detergent in the tank. And hope it's not that because that can definitely kill your fish. But if you're getting those bubbles, they should be popping on their own. If they are, don't worry about it. If they're not, look further into the reason why you're getting those bubbles. Another reason you might be getting bubbles at your tank though that aren't popping is certain fish that create bubble nests like the betta and the garami. They'll go up to the top and then spit out these bubbles that'll stay there and it'll create a nest for them. But I don't have any bettas or garamis in my tanks and I don't want any bubble blowing cichlids in my tanks either. Finally, on to the reason for the micro bubbles in Alcatraz. If you're like I used to be, then you're cleaning your canister filters way too often. I used to clean mine every other month to get the filter media nice and clean looking inside because I thought, well, clean media means clean water, right? Well, not really. See, some of that grime in there is actually providing extra room for beneficial bacteria to reside, and that's helping to keep your water nice and crystal clear and healthy for your fish. So cleaning it more frequently is actually doing the opposite of what you want it to do. Once I knew that, then I would just wait for my water flow on my return for my output to slow down, then I would know that I needed to open up my canister and clean the media. However, this isn't always the best indicator of when you need to clean your filter, because my water flow hadn't slowed down at all in Alcatraz, but I still needed to take a look inside and see what was going on in my canister. Would you just take a look at this filth? Look, it's even been sucking up some of my miserable trumpet snails that live in my sand. I hate trumpet snails almost as much as I hate microbubbles, by the way. Don't even know how they broke inside Alcatraz, either. Anyway, all these sponges are really clogged up with gunk. And like I said earlier, that can be helpful to the health of your tank, but not when there's so much that the sponges are completely clogged and water can't get through. Check out how disgusting the water is after I squeeze the sponge a few times. If this isn't causing my microbubble problem, it still needed cleaned. I do know that a clogged up canister filter can cause microbubbles. So can cramming too much media in there because that will also drastically reduce flow. Got her all cleaned up, adding some prime to dechlorinate the water and also some stability or bacteria in a bottle. All hooked up and, oh shit, what is this all about? Not to worry, this happens sometimes when you hook a filter back up for some reason. Well, after a bit, it's settled down. And guess what? Yep, no more microbubbles. So, did you guess it? 
Once I got that filter media cleaned and the filter reattached and turned on, those microbubbles disappeared, hallelujah. Have you ever had an experience with microbubbles and what was the cause of them and what'd you do to fix it? Let everybody know in the comments. You've been watching The Cichlid Charmer and as always, thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time.